Amp2.tv presents You and Your Doctor, teaching you to live a longer and healthier life. Proudly sponsored by All County Healthcare, where people are the heart of our business. All County Healthcare is a Medicare certified agency where one call will service all your home care health needs. For more information, call 954 717 7027 or visit our website, allcountyhealthcare.com. Now, Let's get informed to living a longer and healthier life. Here is your host for today's show. Hi, welcome to You and Your Doctor. I'm Lorena Anderson, your life and energy coach. And I'm here to help you uh, know a lot of the different things that are important for you for your choices on health care. So uh, we are being presented by Amp2.tv. You can find us live on the internet and we're also streaming from uh, all county health care and all county health care is our sponsor this evening so we'd like to thank them very much please this is also interactive so if you have any questions for any of our um, guests this evening please just give us a call at 888-565-1470 So welcome. It's great to have you here tonight. You can find us every Tuesday evening from 6 to 7, you and your doctor. So I'd like to introduce our first guest this evening. His name is Bert Hankel, Dr. Bert Hankel, and he's a podiatrist. So welcome. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's great to have you here. So tell us a little bit about uh, what took you into the podiatry uh, field. Actually, I was brought in by my mother's crooked feet. When really? I was, yes, I was born and raised in Germany, and I was uh-huh. still in high school. We used to come here every summer. Uh huh. And one summer, my mother decided to have her hematose fixed. Okay. And I decided it was a nice opportunity to go in and watch the surgery, and which, of course, I was denied since my mother. <laughs> I, was I was gonna say you. you but they offered me a job you. after I graduated <laughs> from high school, so I moved after high school to uh-huh. Florida and worked for the podiatry group over in Sarasota, Bradenton. Wow. Like what I saw, and here I am. That's amazing. Oh, that's so funny. it was your mom's hammer toes that My did it, huh? My mother's that did it, yeah. Wow. And, and that's where you then found your passion. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. So tell us a little bit about uh, podiatry. You know, give us some of the well, podiatry insight. Podiatry is basically the, the medical field that deals with foot, ankle, and the lower leg, anything below the knee. Mm-hmm. And it could be from fractures to wounds, ingrown nails, bunions, hammer toes. Mm-hmm. Anything mm-hmm. involves bones, muscles, skin, we treat it all. Okay. Now, uh, how do you go about, let's just say uh, hammer toe, how do you go about treating that? To- well, with hammer toes, I, I'm i more of an old approach. I, I like conservative treatment first before surgery. I save the surgery to the very last where Excellent. pain is understandable. Yes. And um, so padding, adjustment of the shoe gear. Uh-huh. If everything else fails, you perform surgery, straighten out the toe and... Okay. Okay. Fix the problem that way. Well, and, and you know, I was talking to you a little bit earlier um, because I did have a podiatrist that uh, ended up doing surgery on right. on one of my bones. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I was walking, so you know, please be careful of where you're walking. That that's number one, and be careful of what you're wearing as well. Because I just had you know a sandal on it, and it just had a little bit of a platform. It goes quickly, yeah. Oh my goodness! And I hit this pavement that was uneven, and and it twisted my foot like this and uh and it tore off the back of my bone my Mm -hmm. ligament was so strong that it just tore off the back of the bone and um and i remember it it wasn't real painful but it was kind of a little bit of a floppy foot there and i could not work on it anymore so uh you know i i understand podiatry at, at least at that level you know through surgery i had to have a pin and a cast for 10 days or 10 weeks you know, and right. then uh, and then a little bit later after that, about three months after the cast came off, then I had the pin taken out. So yeah, it's actually a quite common fracture that you had was the outside of the foot. Yeah, yeah. A lot of athletes. Uh, okay. Kevin, Kevin Durant <laughs> is a big basketball player. He he had it twice. So Did he? Okay. He was by it. So it's it's very common. Yeah, I've I kind of was wondering how common that was, but you know, it's just such a small little bone. Anyhow, it's a small. It's it's a long bone with a small tuberosity on it, access in the area. Uh-huh. And you have a big tendon that attaches to it. And if you twist it the right way, it pulls right off. Oh, I so. twisted it the perfect way, I yes. could tell. 
Oh, well, that was that was a wonderful experience. I mean, I've never had any problem after that. Yeah. So um, I was very happy with my podiatrist. That was really excellent. So how long have you been practicing where, in, uh, in your field? I've been practicing for 20 years now, 18 of them down here in Florida. Wow. All in Hollywood and Pembroke Pines. Okay, okay. And, but I started out in Philadelphia. I Did practiced you? for almost two years up there. Okay. Until the bad winters drove me back to Florida. I, I know. I'm from Chicago. I understand those bad yes. winters. I never had the opportunity, though, of going, you know, coming down or going back up and then coming back down. So that's... Yeah, well, I was born in Germany, like I said. And then, so I was used to the cold, but then I moved here. I went to college in Tampa. Uh-huh. And But then moved for nine years up to uh, Philadelphia. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, enough. it's a shocker. It was, it was enough, yes. <laughs> it's a shocker. I know. I'm like, oh, no, I, I like to visit now. It's it's nice to see the snow when you can go and see it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Just as long as you know you're coming Not back to home. Have to live in it. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that's very interesting. Where did you get your schooling from? Well, I went to, I started out the, the State College of Florida, which is in Brayden, then, then University mm-hmm. of Florida, and then moved up to Philadelphia, which at that time was a private podiatry school, and now it's associated with Temple University. Oh, wow. Right, downtown Philadelphia. Oh, excellent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love Philly. It's a uh, good that's city. a beautiful area. Yes, it's and the city. That's history cold there. Winter. I know, I know. Oh, and it's probably warmer than Chicago, though. Yeah. Oh, gosh. So, what kind of education uh, do you need to become a podiatrist? It's a uh, regular medical school, it's a uh, eight years co- for college and podiatry school. Eight years. And wow. yeah, the first two years of podiatry school is regular medicine where you study the whole body, every, every system in the body, mm-hmm. and the last two years to concentrate more on the, the feet, ankle, and lower leg okay. disorders. Okay. Wow. And you know something, uh, for our seniors, you know, it's so important to have the right type of foot gear. Mm-hmm. So talk to us a little bit about what you look at, what, uh, what they might need to look at, what they might need to be aware of when it comes to their health care uh, surrounding their feet and and how to be able to identify. Well, the first first thing you have to go with comfort, not looks. I have a lot of ladies that comes in in the <laughs> 80s, and the high heels, pointy <laughs> shoes, complain about the feet, but uh-huh. they want wonders and then it doesn't happen. So uh-huh. sneaker type of shoe, uh-huh. or SAS used to be a shoe. I don't know if they still make them, but... Oh, yeah, they do. They as a matter of fact, okay. yeah, my mom has them because she's had... a very good shoe, a very, very a good supportive shoe. Yeah, she's had good some serious soul. problems, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And um, what else do they need to be aware of? Um, aches or pains? So, you know, what's normal and what's not normal? Well, the, the usual feet, just like the rest of the body, you get a threaded pain in the feet too. So if you have a toe, is bunion deformity, you're going to get some pain there. Mm-hmm. If you have any, if any severe pain where one foot is more than the other, you should seek but I just ah. see if there's anything else going on. Okay. Okay. Any corns, if they become inflamed or calluses. Okay. That could get infected, so you got to be worried about that. Okay. So those are some of the things that you need to uh, keep a, be aware of and keep an eye out for as well. If you've got more pain in one side of your foot than the other, um, please give uh, the podiatrist. Well, give, give us your information, please. Sure. <laughs> I have two offices, one in Hollywood. Okay. And you can reach me there at 954-981-8000. I'm there most I'm of the time. I'm going to have you just slow down a okay. little bit <laughs> so that they can write it down. Okay. 981-8000. Okay. That's most of my days I spend in Hollywood. And then I have a okay. small satellite office out in Pembroke Pines. Okay. And you can reach me there at 954-885-1865. Okay. And for okay. those who have a hard time leaving their home or cannot leave their home, I do house calls too. Do you really? Oh, my God, I thought that was a thing of the past. I always did it. I remember when I was a child, the doctor came to us, and I always said, if I become a doctor, that's what I want to do. Uh I did it in Philadelphia in the worst neighborhoods. I did house calls, and I do it here every day. So I usually go out to lunch and after hours. Wow. So you are really dedicated to this profession. I like it, yes. Oh, yeah, I would say, yes. Especially if you're doing it, you know, during lunchtime and after Mm -hmm. hours and everything. Well, that's wonderful. Uh, you know, and that was one of my questions, too. What makes you different? You know, why should somebody seek you out? I think it's just the, the old approach, the old-time approach. Yeah. You know, I say you, you, nowadays you have doctors and you have businessmen. I, I, I like to consider a doctor who cares about the patient's health. Uh-huh. And, well, that's very interesting. Uh, tell us a little bit more about that. That's, that's a very interesting um, uh, definition. Well, I think with the, uh, I don't take many HMOs. Okay. For the 
that purpose only because if you take HMOs, you have to see a certain amount of patients every day, mm-hmm. which I don't think you can give quality care. I like to take my time with patients mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. get better care and make sure they're, they're pain-free when they leave my office. Wonderful. And and I just, I love the fact that you do house calls. Oh, my goodness. I I, that really makes, that takes me back, you know, into when I was a small child. Yeah, I got uh, the comment all the time. Yes. I got an old-fashioned doctor's back I go around with. It, do you really? Oh, yeah. Now, did you get that from an antique fair or no, something? No, there's one they... company still in Chicago that makes them sell. Stop it. In yes. Chicago. Hey, yes. I'm from Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. Yeah. I'm really surprised. Well, that that is... Um, that's really something that makes yeah. you special. I enjoy it. Yeah, it, it I can it, tell. A, it gets me out of the office, and it's a totally different approach, you know. Yes. Get to yes. see the patients home. You talk to them more, and well, and not only that, but I would think that if you're in the patient's home as well, you get to view uh, the overview of where they're living right. and what some of the dangers. Tell us about some of the dangers that they might run into that they need to be aware of. Well, just the floors itself, slippy floors, old rugs. Mm-hmm. Just um, rugs and throw, like throw rugs or something down on the floor. You gotta mm-hmm. be careful with. Mm-hmm. And just cords. Cords. Yeah. Definitely nowadays <laughs> with all the electronics out there. Uh huh. Yes. Um, yeah. It's a. Yeah. Yeah. Be, a lot of times, you know. Also, um, what I've heard is lighting. You know, mm-hmm. they have to make sure that wherever they're walking, mm-hmm. the lighting is incredibly important so they can see where they're going right. and see whether or not there's any obstacles that they've put in their way or, right. or something in front right. of them. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, that's a really um, unique thing. Give them your information again so okay. that... I have an office in Hollywood, <laughs> right off 95 on Hollywood Boulevard. The phone number there is 954-981-8000. And another office in Pempo Pines near the hospital. It's actually at the Southwest Focal Point, if anybody knows Pempo Pines, which is a senior center out there. <laughs> oh, and great. And my number there is 954-885-1865. That's excellent. And that's Dr. Bert Henkel, H-E-N-K-E-L, great. from Germany. <laughs> I have some German blood in me, too. Right. So <laughs> I, I I have that, you know, close affinity with that. Yeah, but I'm, I don't consider myself American. I'm pretty much oh, over there. Yeah. I'm left over there, so. Yeah, yeah. And I'd just like to say thank you again to All County Healthcare for sponsoring this show this evening. Um, they always put their patients' care at the top. That's what the, their heart is. And they're very passionate about what they do. Uh, in taking care of their clients and making sure that they are um, well taken care of, whether it is through um, a CNA, Certified Nursing Assistant, or whether it is a a nurse that needs to come to your home for aftercare. So thank you, All County Healthcare. And I can vouch for them. Can you? Doing the house calls, I use them quite a bit for home care, nursing, wound care, and therapy, Uh physical therapy. Excellent. They do an excellent job, yes. Excellent. So, um, what else does podiatry entail? Podiatry entails anything from conservative surgical treatments of bunions, hematos, ingrown nails. Ingrown nails. That's a big one, isn't it? It's quite a bit down here, yes. Yeah, yes. Um, And do you, uh, fascist, plantar fasciitis. Thank you. (laughs) Plantar fasciitis, big ligament on the bottom of the foot. Yeah. I, I mean, I have one of my uh, dear girlfriends who was just suffering from yeah. it. it. It's really um, incredibly painful. And not only that, what does she do? She's she's like my little hero. You know, she she likes to uh, do all this ninja stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> As a matter of fact, she had me uh, hanging from silk one time. You know, we're doing all these acrobats on silk, right? Well, she goes on to a warped wall. Right. And she tears her Achilles tendon, pops uh. it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah, poor thing. The yeah, surgery on that, and then her, her. Um... Blind the fascia. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my father just went through the Achilles tendon last year, so. Oh, jeez. Yeah, it's not a not an easy one to recover yeah, from. No, no, and, and then she's moving her house at the same time. I mean, uh, it was it's crazy time, yeah. a crazy time. So, what types of surgeries are there? Any other types of surgeries that are specific to you that I you perform? I do more the common forefoot and rear foot surgeries. I used to do ankle fractures too, but it's just orthopedics usually take those from the hospitals and they come through the emergency room more than the, the private practices. Okay, okay. So, and what hospitals do you work out of? I work out of Memorial Regional Hospital in Hollywood. Okay, yeah, familiar with that mm-hmm. one. 
And then Excellent. I do some smaller procedures in the office itself. Okay. Like little bone spurs on the toes or something, stuff like that. Oh, that's nice. Mm-hmm. So that they don't have to, you know, Correct. be admitted into the hospital. Well, most, most surgeries are outpatient but podiatry nowadays. Mm-hmm. So, which means you get done early in the morning, be home for lunch. So, <laughs> that's nice. That's... <laughs> So, who sh- I, I know I probably asked this before, but who would be a, a really good candidate to come and see you? Well, anybody that has any symptomatic problem with the feet. Mm-hmm. You know, I see most of the geriatric crowd, but uh, especially diabetics. Mm-hmm. Even if diabetics have no problems, for some reason, diabetic feet and eyes get affected first. Wow. So, they should see a at least twice a year just to get a checkup. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. They can lose a sensation, which is called neuropathy in the feet. Oh, yeah, that's right. So I yeah. had one patient that walked around with a nail in his shoe for three weeks and ended up with a big abscess in his foot and ended up losing a toe. And Oh, my goodness, so you're it's, it's kidding. Numbness of the feet, yes. Wow. <laughs> and there's there's treatments for that nowadays, too. You know, besides medications, I, uh-huh. there's a nerve stimulation, which is done by all county, the physical therapy department. Oh, okay, so okay, cool, cool. So, yeah, that could be a really um, scary thought. A nail. Yeah. What else do you end up seeing? <laughs> I'm going to put you on the spot here. I see a lot of good things. I see a lot of wounds. I do a lot of wound care. Okay. Which is problematic with diabetics, too, because for some reason they yeah. have different bacteria than the non diabetic so any infection could be worse. And then if infection gets too far and it gets into the bone, you have to take the bone out. There's no cure for bone infection except excising the bone. Wow. So... Which makes it even more difficult because, you know, a, a lot of times they're so unbalanced. So unbalanced, and a lot of times they're, they're embarrassed to come in. They mm-hmm. wait too long. Oh, yeah. And, you know, it's... it's... Yeah. So, listen, our, our listeners, our audience, do not wait. Do not procrastinate when it comes to your feet. Because I will tell you, you know, when I had my broken foot, broken foot, yeah, <laughs> and I'm in a cast, you not only end up losing your, your leg, but you mm-hmm. lose your hands too because you've got to be on crutches or a walker. So you lose a lot of your uh, freedom. It is. It's, it's easier to treat if you catch it early. Okay. And it's much well, easier for the patient too. You know, yes. Instead of being non-weight bearing on the leg for like you were for eight weeks. Yep. Yeah. Which is tough, and especially if you're an elderly person. Exactly. You know, it's, it's... And, and, you know, luckily enough, I, I work out all the time, so I was pretty strong mm-hmm. and, and could handle it a lot better than a lot of our seniors, right. you know, that might not be exercising like they need to. So those stabilizer muscles the, the, that balance them um, aren't as strong or, or quite weak right. and can leave them really, um, it, it, that's how you lose your freedom. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, you so. wheelchair. yeah, wheelchair yeah. or Tough. walker. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I, I realized that I had to make a, a little bag, you know, so that I could put things either on my crutches or my little walker <laughs> so that I could carry things. Because, yeah, I tell you, you lose your hands and, and your mobility, mm-hmm. you know, and that really leaves an impact on um, your quality of life. Yeah, impact on your quality and might be daughter or son has to take care of you or you have to hire somebody to take care of you so it's uh, yeah and especially down it's, here it's, it's really tough you know because a lot of people come down here to retire right. and they don't have family right. around I see that all the time yes do you well that's one of the reasons why you're, you're um what you're doing to help your your patients is so critical you know it's absolutely i i'm ecstatic the way they keep them walking yes. yeah and not only that but doing house calls mm-hmm. That that Thanks. is that is wonderful. That is. Thank you. <laughs> you're Thank welcome. You. I enjoy it. So. Uh, was there any other? I mean, what what do you see on the horizon? Do you see anything new coming up on the horizon? Not really in feed. I mean, I just went to a seminar not too long ago, and it's there's not a lot of new technology out there. Mm-hmm. It's getting better with uh, infection treatments. Antibiotics are changing a little bit, but oh, good. So that's that's getting a little better, but okay. And um. Do you end up working with a lot of sources when it comes to the shoes? I mean, do you do orthotics? I do orthotics in the office, yes. Okay, okay. And uh, if you're a medical patient and you have diabetes, a medication will buy you a pair of shoes with insoles every year. So I have a person that does that. Yeah, oh, wonderful. Off of that and she goes to the house too, which is perfect. Oh, that, that is wonderful. Yeah, because a lot of times, you know, they can't get out or they can't drive or mm-hmm. they don't have anybody to drive them either. Yeah. And sometimes the transportation, 
you know, system. Um, it's it, not the best thing, you know. yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a little yes. weak. Yeah. yeah, it needs to be upped a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, um, do you see yourself continuing on this uh, passion of yours? Oh, yeah. I've been doing it for 20 years. I'm not stuck. <laughs> So uh, I'll continue. Oh, God. You see it? Are you, are you going to branch out a little bit further or are you? I'm pretty busy as it is now. I go to assisted living facilities, tools, and nursing homes. Oh, do you? Too, but, oh, yeah. okay. What are some of the ones that you go to? I go to Presidential, which is in Hollywood. Okay. I go to a lot of smaller ones, South Oaks, Camelot Court, Victoria Gardens. I like the smaller facilities better because... It's always the same nurse there, so if you have any orders, anything, you know mm -hmm. they're going to get done. Mm. Whereas if you go to a more bigger commercial, ALFs nowadays, it's yeah. you're on the back stove somewhere. Oh, order, so. okay, I gotcha. Yeah, well, it is wonderful talking with you. Um, we're learning a lot about what we need to be aware of, you know. And and I just want to tell the audience also that um, when you're in your home, please. You know, as you're walking, look down, make sure that whatever you're doing uh, in terms of your path and where you need to go, make sure that you don't have 80 throw rugs on the right. floor, that you move those so that you don't trip over them. Make sure that there's no cords on the floor that uh, you might stumble, you know, or you might not see. And, and also make sure that you've got the lighting that's proper so that you can see where you're going. And if you're diabetic, no barefoot walking and check your shoes inside oh, and out. Oh, well, that's interesting. Um, really? Um, because they, they... Could be step on a piece of glass, not knowing it after... Oh, yeah, the you know, niopathy? You see, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's, a, it's a big problem, neuropathy, yes. Yeah. And you know something? What I hear is that diabetes uh, is really um, becoming more of an epidemic. Mm -hmm. And... It really serious, uh, serious problems with that. Getting more and more, yes, especially type 2, which is the late onset diabetes. Oh, really? Which is easy treatable with uh, pills instead of needles, but uh -huh. it's the uh -huh. same effects. I gotcha. Wow. Yeah. So, and a lot of times also when they're dealing with that, um, you know, it, it can be so frustrating and they're just not as aware that they need to be. Not only are they not aware as they need to be, some diabetics, I always say, they, they give up. They're not oh. compliant. You know, they still eat the sugars, and, and, and they just want to live their life and be happy. And mm -hmm. so it's, it's But difficult. they're not happy. <laughs> they're not happy because they get all the problems that come with it. And exactly. That's where we come in and trying to straighten them out. But it's, it's some, some, some patients are tougher. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I would imagine, you, you know, they get so st stuck in their own ways, mm -hmm. you know, that it's really hard to um, have them make change. You know, change is so difficult. And, and even the smaller changes sometimes seem to be overwhelming for them. Yeah. But I, it, luckily right. enough, though, they've got you there to yeah, kind I mean, of give them a, a hand. Food out there has got a little easier. You know, I think through the Atkins diet, there's a lot of sugar-free stuff out there now for them. Okay. Low carbohydrate stuff, so it's uh, it's got a little better. A little bit better. As far as the diet, so. But. Well, that's that's a good thing. That's, that's a good thing. So, um, let's see. what a couple more questions here sure. that I have for you. <laughs> what what's the difference between a podiatrist and a chiropodist? Uh, chiropodist. Chiropodist. That's okay. what we used to be. <laughs> Chiropodists <laughs> used to be podiatrists without the surgery. Oh, okay. So all the old-time podiatrists down here, they used to be known as chiropodists. And then when we came along and started doing surgery, actually, when I moved down here, I bought an office from a podiatrist that's been there for 20 years before I came here, so it's 38 years ago. Oh. And he always told me the story. If somebody did a surgery, they all went in to watch. And that's how they learned surgery. Wow. And then once this got approved by the government and we, we started doing surgery, it became podiatrist just to differentiate from the chiropractic chiropodist yes more of a surgical because i was i was looking at the way it was yeah. spelled and that says chiro to me <laughs> so now now you actually have to go through surgical training if you wanted the surgery after podiatrist school oh okay okay and Which as I you did. said that's a good you know another four years it's afterwards a, well, it's, a, it's eight years of college and podiatrist school and then at least two years of internship postgraduate residency oh okay yeah. okay oh that's a long time
Mm. <laughs> at least you started having fun. You know? hey. Residency, you get to work and hey, yeah. it's a hands-on training, which is good. Yes. So are there any other stories that you can share with us about um, your field? About my field? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I gave you the one with the nail on the foot. Yeah. Who mm. actually, his neighbor was there when we punctured the abscess and he passed out on us. Well, we oh, no. <laughs> he was hospitalized, but he wanted to watch. But, oh, my goodness. <laughs> and, yeah, that, that's, I see through the hospital we get a lot of referrals for gangrene. Oh. So, you know, people losing their toes, but losing half their foot. Yeah. So it's, yes. Yeah, I, not good stories, but uh, interesting. Well, I, but you know something, though? I think that what's so important is the education, okay? Mm -hmm. You know, that's what happens if you play denial and you don't get something taken care of immediately mm -hmm. when, when you notice that there's a problem. You know, there's all sorts of, um, you know, real serious critical um, well, it's true. I mean, problems. I would say the feet is the further away from your heart. So the blood vessels are going to be the smallest, the nerves are going to be the smallest. Mm -hmm. So they're going to get affected first. So if yeah. you do go to podiatrist, get your circulation checked. Or they sure, need to come to you. Make sure, come to me, or it doesn't matter as yeah. long as they get the circulation checked when they go. Dr. Bert Hinkle. And he does house calls. Right. So give him a call. Uh, he's located in Hollywood, his one office is in Hollywood. Telephone number is? 954-981-8000. Okay. And then he also has a satellite to office in Pembroke Pines. 954-885-1865. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I want to tell, I want to thank you so much for being here, being part of the show and everything, helping to educate us, you know, and knowing what we need to look for so that we can uh, become more aware of our health care, especially, you know, when we start hitting a, a few of those um uh, senior years, um, sometimes things, you know, fall off to the side. So, yeah, it's, 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 I always say you feed it your foundation. Mm -hmm. The foundation of the house, if it cracks, the whole house cracks. So, take care of your feet. Yes. Walk and stay upright. Yes. And make sure that if you're diabetic, you wear shoes. No, um, no barefooting. No barefooting. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I love barefooting. <laughs> no barefooting. And no barefooting. Wear the proper shoes as well. So, Dr. Hankel, thank you very thank much. You. I appreciate thank you, you uh, being here and being with us. And uh, we're going to uh, have a commercial at this moment. Uh, stay tuned because we have Dr. Richard Silva, who's coming on, to, going to be a guest next with us. So, thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Hall County Healthcare, Inc. is locally owned and operated, serving the Tri-County area, Palm Beach, Dade, and Broward Counties for the last 25 years. The practice of medicine is changing dramatically. All County Healthcare, Inc. still does it the old-fashioned way, where our nurses and healthcare professionals come into your home to service your medical needs, providing you the fastest and best care possible. For more information, call 954 717 7027. And remember, Medicare Home Care is covered by Part A of Medicare with no out of pocket cost to you. It's your decision and only your decision on what health care agency you use. Call today, All County Home Health Care Inc. at 954 717 7027. License 20099096. Hi, my name is Deanna Barron. I'm an RN with All County Health Care. I used to work for this huge corporate-owned home health agency, and I was always worried that they wouldn't let me make enough nursing visits to be sure that your wound was fully healed or that you were completely comfortable checking your husband's blood sugar level and giving him the correct dose of insulin or that your mom's lingering cough was the end of her bronchitis, not the beginning of a new episode. The owner of All County Healthcare always says, give the patient what they need, and he means it. At All County Healthcare, I see my patients until their goals are met, and I never worry. I hope you never need a nurse to come to your home, but if you do, tell your doctor, I want All County Healthcare. You are listening to You and Your Doctor, Living Longer and Healthier, an informative show that helps you find answers to questions you always wanted to ask but did not have that somebody that could make a difference in your life. Call into the show if you have a question at 
1470, and we will put you on the air to inform all our listeners. Now, back to our show. Hi, welcome back. This is Lorena Anderson, your life and energy coach, and it's presented by AMP2 TV. As a matter of fact, you can watch us live streaming on AMP2, that's A-M-P, the number two dot TV. Look for you and your doctors, and you can also find us on allcountyhealthcare.com. We're streaming live there as well, and thank you, All County, for sponsoring tonight's show. You can find us here every Tuesday evening between 6 and 7, and it, we want to hear telephone calls. Come in and call us if you have any questions for any of our guests. The number is 888-565-1470. So give us a call and watch us live on Internet TV. Well, I'd like to welcome our next guest, Dr. Richard Selva. And uh, he happens to be, uh, look at the big smile and the wave, <laughs> you great energy here. He Thank happens you. to be um, an osteopathic family yes. doctor. So please share with us exactly what that means so that we know. <clears throat> A lot of people confuse DOs and MDs. Basically, there's two tracks. There's allopathic and osteopathic. Osteopathic uh, medicine was formed from allopathic medicine. And basically, it was anatomy professor that um, decided that back then the medical treatments were very toxic and uh, hurt the patients more than the illnesses. We always joke around my office and says the disease cannot, the treatment cannot be worse than the disease. And in, and so some of the MDs broke away uh -huh. and formed osteopathic physicians, which use muscular uh, bones and and uh, and different natural modalities to heal the body. We also prescribe medicine and do surgery, and we're certified mm -hmm. in every specialty, brain surgery and neurology, cardiology. I'm family medicine mm -hmm. uh, because I, lo I love prevention. That's my uh, passion. Okay. So um, that's where I um, – and most, most DOs are in, in primary care, I would say. Okay, excellent. So um, share with them where you are located and how they can get a hold of you. My office is located in um, Pompano. Uh, across from North Broward Medical Center. There's Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we are open every day except for Sunday. Wow. And we are always taking new patients. Wow, excellent. And what's your telephone number so they can get a hold of you? My office number is area code 954-943-9670. Excellent. And you have a website as well. Yes, Silva Medical Center oh, at live.com. Okay. Live.com. Wow, okay, mm -hmm. great. Great, thank you for that. So, um... How is your training unique and, uh, compared with other doctors? I think that um, DOs, the main thing is a philosophy. It's not so much in the practice of medicine, but in the philosophy, which ends up influencing the way you practice medicine. And that is we learned that the body is a whole unit, not several small pieces. Mm -hmm. um, so most uh, DOs, even though we're specialists in some cases, we look at the whole body's response mm -hmm. to pain and inflammation. And also, the most important is that we learned, I can't believe I went to medical school 23, 24 years ago, it was pretty controversial back then, um, is that the body heals itself. And it's something that we kind of know, but we don't know. <laughs> That's so amazing. <laughs> because we've been taught for, for, for I don't know how long that it is the body that's healing itself, you know, and that any kind of medicine is just an enhancement to help the healing process. Correct. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Like antibiotics, they kill most of the bacteria, but it's actually your immune system that kills the rest and recuperates you. So people that have a bad immune system, mm. say people that are suffering from HIV, for example, uh -huh. and their immune system, their T cells are really low, you can give them $5 million of antibiotics and they still die. Oh, that's very interesting. So now we've learned to treat them in a different way where we actually boost their immune system mm -hmm. instead of giving them all the antibiotics. We really didn't know in the 80s what was going on. Right. But once we figured it out, and it, it's funny because it also helped us treat other viral illnesses such as hepatitis and, and herpes because mm -hmm. we've learned how to attack these viruses by boosting the body's own natural killer cells, their T cells, which in turn go and kill the invaders. That's very interesting. So how, how do we end up doing that? How do you build your immune system then? It's very tricky. Um, first of all, I would say, I always tell my patients, go to the basics, right? The basics are nutrition, mm -hmm. exercise, 
Proper sleep, yes, you have to sleep. <laughs> yeah. Let me say that again. You actually have to sleep. Yeah. Americans, and, we're very sleep deprived. Exactly, exactly. And and then with our seniors, you know, stay off the TV until two o'clock in the morning or three yes, o'clock in the, the morning. The room has to be dark. Yeah, and, and and fall asleep. Go to sleep at a nice normal time. You know, eleven, eleven thirty, or whatever. Yeah. And allow the body to rest. But I'm sorry, Jimmy Fallon, but you have to go to sleep. <laughs> 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 so sleep, um, nutrition, we're going to get into nutrition more, um, exercise, mm -hmm. and you know, it has to be age appropriate exercise, obviously. Absolutely. Yes. And, um, and also believe it or not being positive and having a positive energy boosts your immune system. Wow. Well, that's very interesting. Me being a life and energy coach, I'm always working on the, the, the positive releasing negativity within the body, mind and the thoughts. And then, you know, shifting energy into the positivity. So that's that's very interesting. One of the things that we work with with our patients um, is in the area of physical and also mental power. Mm. In other words, you have to believe that you can heal mm -hmm. for your body to heal because your brain is actually like a Wi-Fi projector. It is. So yes. what you project is actually what you're going to walk into. Mm -hmm. So if you project gloom and doom, your life is going to be gloom and doom. If you project rainbows and sunny days, your life was actually going to be rainbows and sunny days. Now, we live in Florida. We're used to rainbows and sunny days. <laughs> we sure are. We're blessed. <laughs> yes. And warm weather. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it's a little bit different up north, yes. needless to say. Yes. Although We're they're lucky. getting their uh, their dosage right now. I, I remember because I lived up in Chicago and I could not wait for summer because I was such a, yes. a, a hot weather girl. You know, so. Uh, and it seems like it would come and go. It would be like. Memorial Day, Labor Day, boom. Done. That's it, yeah. I mean, it's September 4th, that's it. Forget it, no more summer. <laughs> One of the things that I found interesting mm -hmm. in my office is that when we started checking vitamin D levels in our patients, oh. and you know, I said, we're in Florida, everybody's going to have high vitamin D. My vitamin D was low. Really? And I like doing outdoor stuff. I play soccer, I'm active with the kids, I go swimming. But of course, I try to avoid the peak sun hours, you know, because that's bad for your skin. And I was low. So I started testing a lot of our patients that had depression, anxiety, and different issues like mm -hmm. diabetes. Mm -hmm. And I found that a lot of our patients had low vitamin D. And vitamin D is one of those, um, it's actually like a hormone. It shouldn't be even called vitamin D, but it affects a lot of uh, diseases if you're deficient in it. It's a risk factor for breast cancer, colon cancer. Really? Yes. Wow, that's very interesting. So one thing you can do is go take some vitamin D. We recommend taking it with K2. Because mm -hmm. that helps it penetrate and get into your body better. It absorbs better, absorbs huh? absorbs better. Mm -hmm. And, of course, with a little bit of fat in the meal. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you'd be surprised. Just boosting your vitamin D can boost your immune system. Yeah, see, I love vitamin D from the sun. <laughs> yes. I, I, yeah, I love being outside. I love boating and swimming. and we, You know, we recommend incorporating the sun into activities. Mm -hmm. We don't uh, tell patients to stay out of the sun. However, because it's Florida... We have to be cognizant that there are certain hours of the day where you do need to seek shade and yeah. wear protective clothing because you can get skin cancer. Yes. But it, outside of that area, you know, you can be safe and have fun and enjoy the water sports and, and the general sunniness of Florida. And it's, it's a great thing. The oranges love it also. Yeah, I know they do. Yes, <laughs> yes. I lived up in Orlando too for uh, about five years and those oranges, not only did they love it, but they also loved a little bit of freeze that would happen out That's there. That's right. You know, it would it would solidify the juices, the sweetness and the juices. Makes it juicier. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about your background. Okay. So my mom and my grandmother, they, my mom came here from Brazil when she was 13. They're Italians from Naples, but they went to Brazil. So they went to like <laughs> America and said, okay, this is not the America that we really wanted. Oh so they came here after uh, 14, 15 uh, years of age. My dad got here when he was around 18. So they're you know, pretty young when they got here. Uh -huh. So they're, my mom's 80 now. So, I mean, that's a long time she's been here. Yeah. And uh, she's a native. She's a native, <laughs> New Jersey. Yeah. And uh, both my mom and my grandmother were, were cooks. They're really good. Uh -huh. And uh, in her little town in Brazil, they were famous. Wow. And so when they moved here, you know, of course, I grew up in the house and I, I was um, uh, taught how to cook and how to use different herbs and spices and all natural meats and, mm. and vegetables. So I think that influenced me in my medical practice in seeking out natural treatments and vitamins and things that you should do automatically, like in your diet. For example, I don't, I don't think most people believe this, but I don't believe that you can be healthy just taking meds. You know, you go to oh, your I doctor, totally they agree. tell yeah. you, okay, you need this med, this med, this med. Yeah, 
but that doesn't make you healthy. No. I always tell my patients, if you go to a party and one person takes 10 meds, you don't say, wow, that person's really healthy. <laughs> but if you go to a party and somebody <laughs> takes 10 vitamins or they eat a lot of fruits and vegetables, you say that person's healthy. Yes, yes, so there's yes, something yes. about taking supplements and eating fruits and vegetables that makes us healthy. We all know that. Yes. You don't have to be a physician. Exactly. And uh, being active, of, especially in elderly people, they tend to lose that activity. Yes. And we use the use it or lose it motto in our office. And it's really true. You know, when you, as you get older, I'm 47 now. I'm getting to the five zero mark. Ooh, uh, yeah. It's okay. It's a piece of cake, honey. <laughs> you don't have anything to worry so, about. <laughs> I take that advice myself. Excellent. Excellent. Well, I, and I do too, as um, I, I'm 61. Wow. You look great. <laughs> I would have messed that up big time. <laughs> Thanks. Well, but I do a lot of the same things that yes. you were talking so about. So you're a perfect example. I, I exercise uh, consistently. I eat really well. Um, I'm mainly a vegetarian, uh, but I'm always, you know, watching out for my health and making sure that that's yeah. taking care of so, well, congratulations. you got another, uh, what, three years before you hit the 5-0, yes, huh? Yes, yes. Good for I'm you. Gonna, I'm going to prepare. It's like training for the Olympics. Uh, yeah, I know Except what you it's mean. three years, not four years. <laughs> yeah, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I want to hit 50 strong. I love it. I love it. You know, and that's really interesting that you brought up the whole uh, piece about nutrition because there's very few doctors that I really know of that, that highlight nutrition, that really make that part of their um, regiment. I think we get about four hours out of four years of nutrition in medical school. Really? I think oh my mine goodness. was less than that. Yeah. Wow. So we're not really well trained in that. It's something you have to learn on your own. We have a nutritionist. We have a board certified uh, nutritionist in our office. Mm -hmm. So she's a doctor of nutrition, which helps a lot too because she spends a lot more time with the patients. The nurses also help with dietary guidelines that we've you know taught them mm -hmm. so they can review that. We give them a sheet. Um, where they can write in the foods that they like and we go over that with them to make sure okay I don't like sweet potatoes so we cross that off we add something else okay so it should be something yeah. that you like because love uh, love and, and life you should have fun right absolutely so you don't want to be absolutely. doing things that you don't like and you are what you eat yeah and you should <laughs> so. you should love food and love your life you know yeah what I mean? exactly because I have a positive energy about things my brother owns a health food restaurant uh, he has a whole chain of restaurants really so our whole family is kind of in the nutrition healthy state you know uh -huh. but there's some things that we learn in medical school that are actually wrong like uh, high fat diets are bad and um, you know carbs are good carbs are not good so you should have a low carb diet yeah. and a high saturated healthy fat diet yes avocados um, mm -hmm. nuts? coconut oil is the best oh, nuts right nuts very good for you yeah coconut oil has 60% of medium chain triglycerides, uh, which means it has six to 12 carbons. And uh, what that means is it helps you burn energy, it increases your metabolism, it helps you lower your cholesterol, it increases the good cholesterol, and it turns the bad cholesterol into light and fluffy, so less dangerous bad cholesterol. Wow, yeah, really so it has interesting. Yeah, so it all in a little tablespoon of, uh, yeah. olive, of uh, coconut oil. I love coconut. Coconut's anything though, anyhow. Yeah. You know, I mean, coconut water is one of my favorite drinks. And and if you can get the raw coconut and just cut up, you know, yes. open the top, there's the water's in there and then there's a gel in there and it's so good. I grew up uh, drinking that in Brazil and we used to go on vacation there. Oh yeah, yeah. that's right. That's so I right. would go back there for vacation. We never did really live there, but mm -hmm. um, we would go back there to stay for a while and, and have vacations there. And I would drink all the uh, juices or natural and passion fruit and, and coconuts. And so that kind of got engraved in my, uh, in my mental uh, thought pattern and into my treatments. Yeah, excellent, excellent. So uh, if somebody does come in to see you and um, they're overweight or they're obese, what are some of the treatments that you help them with? Okay, so this is a big problem. We okay. have 10 and 11 year old um, patients that weigh more than I do, and oh, I'm not a lightweight. Yes. You know, and um, we are seeing, you know, 10 year old kids with diabetes, which used to be called adult onset diabetes, which they changed, by the way. Now it's called diabetes, type two diabetes, type two, because okay. there's younger mm -hmm. people that are getting it, unfortunately. Wow. And a lot of that has to do with the high sugar in our foods and the poor nutrition, poor nutritional content of our foods. So the first thing we do is we put them on a, we have them see the nutritionist. We put them on a diet. Mm -hmm. um, the diet basically is eliminating all those sugary drinks. You know that you can lose 35% of all your calories just by switching to water or unsweetened iced tea um, or coconut water. Mm -hmm. You can So 30 to 35% of all your calories come from what you drink. 
So we get them off the sodas wow. and the processed foods, like the the sugars, the the fruit juices, you know. Oh yeah. And just that makes a big difference. Then we put them on an exercise program with the parents. We we put them in karate programs, taekwondo. Um, really? Wow, yeah, that's all very, kinds of cool stuff that they that's like. That's very you know, cool. Kids don't kids can't go to a gym, but they can right. play. And uh, unfortunately, here it's kind of hot outside. Yeah. So there's some months that are hard to tell your kids to go outside and play. So we, we get them involved in uh, basketball, which is indoors, and different martial arts. And we, we have all these different companies that we recommend, and they give them free trial periods. So we get them active because a lot of uh -huh. kids are, you know. I know. They're way they too much. They exercise their thumb. That's about it. <laughs> that's yeah. about it. My kids are no different from that. I have to <laughs> shut the TV off and put them outside. Well, you, you know, you, you have to set boundaries with it. You know, it's absolutely imperative. I remember, it well, as I was growing up, there, there was no such thing as iPads and no. computers and There's telephones. a lot of competition now for our time. Yeah, I mean, I was always out at the playground. You Pretty know. soon we're going to have an iCar that goes by itself. <laughs> well, I think they're doing that already. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness. So we put them on that. We mm -hmm. Sometimes they need medications. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically we, you know, educate the parents, which are the ones that feed them and buy the food. So we tell them, don't buy any of this food. Buy this food. Don't leave mm -hmm. any of this at home. Mm -hmm. and, you know, at school and at parties, they have the little exceptions. Right. But when they're home, they eat healthy. And then um, we also measure there, their, uh, well, the blood how many, work. Uh, how many of the parents need to be on that as well, though? We put the parents as well. And oh, the parents lose okay. more weight than the kids. Wow. Yeah, my, my nutritionist has better results with weight loss than I do. Because, you know, she spends an hour and a half, two hours with the patient. Uh -huh. And she really focuses on the diet. And that's really what it is. It's really nutritional. Uh, what got me interested in all this is we had a few patients that did gastric bypasses or sleeves. And immediately within one month, they were off all their diabetic medications and off their blood pressure pills. You're kidding. So to me, the light bulb went off and I said, this is dietary. This is nutritional. Yeah, yes. This is reversible. It, exactly. And it we is. have cases and cases and cases and cases. We had one lady that came in. Her blood sugar was like 430 and she was on two meds. And then within two weeks of being on the diet, her blood sugar went down to 200. Now it's 110, 120, which is normal. Wow. And she's going to be coming off the meds soon. Oh, my God. Is Just that wonderful? Just with dietary therapy and, I, and exercise. I love that. And not only that, but what a cost savings as well. Because, you know, a lot of times they get all this medication and, and they're paying enormous amounts of money for it, you know, because some of it is covered by Medicare and sometimes it's not yeah, covered. And, yeah. and all the complications. Oh, my goodness. Yes. And poor healing. Yeah. And the other thing is they get happier because they're doing it themselves. They feel empowered. Yeah. So we see the depression and the anxieties going away. We see big smiles on their faces. And, you know, that's the that's the real benefit. That's the real, to me, that's the reward. Yes. When I see that patient with that huge smile yeah. and they show me they're off their meds and they're doing well, sometimes they'll photo, uh, they'll take pictures on the iPhones uh -huh. of their food and they'll email me or text me with their plates and look, doctor, that. this is what I'm eating. Look at this. I'm eating spinach or, you know, <laughs> I have avocado salad. For the first time. <laughs> and they like it. And they like yeah. it. Well, it's good, you know, and it's good for them. That's so wonderful. So in, in my office, I don't think you can separate nutrition, you know, exercise, so like a healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. There's no set diet that we follow, just low carb mm -hmm. and also health. Mm -hmm. So if you want to be healthy, you can take meds. There's nothing wrong with medications. You know, people are going to still need antibiotics and creams and different things, mm -hmm. but you also have to have a healthy lifestyle. And Absolutely. I think that's where we focus. And we yes. get better results because the healthy lifestyle makes the medicines work much better. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, absolutely imp imperative. Because a lot of times also when you end up having, uh, you know, a good healthy outlook about who you are and what's going on, it, it is so beneficial because it builds up their self-confidence. Yes. It builds up their self-esteem. And then all of a sudden, they're really, really excited about this new level of, of being that they've stepped into, you know, and it, it's youthful. It makes them feel so happy and so alive and as if, you know, um, it, it, they've come back to life again. We, we had a couple that um, they lost about... They're still losing weight, but I think one lost 80 pounds and one lost 68 pounds, which is really hard to do. Wow. Right? Yes. And they went on a second honeymoon because they loved how they looked. <gasps> oh, my so goodness. So they were married, I think, for like 25, 30 years. I they went to a that. second honeymoon and they took all these nice pictures wearing these really nice clothing, you know, and uh -huh. at the beach. Uh -huh. And then they came and they showed me like a video album and they I were crying. It. You know, it was so Aww. nice. And just the 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 love that they have for each other yes, and ha yes. and you know one did it for the other one and the other one did it 
So like one watched out for one while the other one watched out for the other. That's one. amazing. So that, they were like each other's coach. Yes, that's that's incredible because a lot of times, you know, that just creates a lot of the conflict. Don't tell me what to do. What yeah. do you you know? So they even but that's like wonderful. a little friendly competition, you know, like, oh I lost sixty pounds. Oh, I lost seventy <laughs> pounds. It was cool. But you know, there there are positive ways to approach mm-hmm. health and fun ways where you can be healthy and mm-hmm. do well and have great results and have fun doing it. It doesn't have to be scary and, and boring. Yeah. So why do you think, though, that, you know, it seems as if our society is getting heavier and heavier? What is the, what well, do you see as the contributing factor to that? Without getting in too much trouble here, um, <laughs> the main culprit are the foods that we eat, mm-hmm. right? So if you couple all these sugary foods, which is part of the reason why they passed the, you know, low-fat diet to begin with, because think about it. The sugary foods are where all the money is being made. So if you put everybody, doctors, nurses, dietitians, giving people low-fat diets and high sugar, which means high sugar diet, high carb mm-hmm, diet, mm-hmm. then you're basically pushing all these foods because they say, oh, fat-free or cholesterol-free. Like I saw orange juice said cholesterol-free. Of course it's cholesterol-free. It's an orange. <laughs> you know, you don't have to uh-huh. write cholesterol-free on this. <laughs> Yeah. But anyway, there's nothing wrong with butter and these things, you know? Right, So right. they're kind of promoting that sort of lifestyle. And we're getting, you know, France, for example, they eat high-fat diets, right? They drink more wine and smoke more than we do, yet they have lower rates of heart disease and they're thinner. Yes. We eat low-fat diets, lower fat than we than our grandparents and great-grandparents mm-hmm. did, but we're heavier than they are. So mm-hmm. there's something not correct with that theory. Exactly. You know? And then if you take that and then you add in the iPads and the iPhones and the computers and the yeah, self-driving and sedita- cars. Yeah, and, and, and being <clears throat> sedentary as well. We have, we have what, a thousand channels on our TV now? Right? <laughs> oh, goodness. Imagine just going through <laughs> that thing one time. Or you, I, I can't remember. You know, I thought I saw something good and then I forgot what channel it was on, you know. And then I had to go all, all the way back trying to find it again. But it was kind of, yeah, way too many, uh, too much time sitting in front of the TV. I heard one <clears throat> prediction that said by next year, 53% of the population is either going to be diabetic or pre-diabetic. So that's really scary. And You're you know, obesity kidding. is already past 30% of our population. Oh my goodness. So that's that's a significant to me that's a health crisis, you know, and that's where we really Absolutely. focus in our office because the the obesity itself leads to so many other diseases mm-hmm. that if you can get rid of that inflammation, that obesity you're going to prevent so many diseases and save money for healthcare too. Absolutely, absolutely. I had one one of my clients that uh, I sent him down to a uh, um, uh, one of the clinics, mm-hmm. you know, to lose weight, and uh, and he he cleaned himself all out. You know, he stopped the alcohol. Yeah. He, he he ate really healthy foods. Um, and he was eating consistently, you know, a little bit every, you know, two or three hours. And then he was learning a lot about what is happening with the body and how to feed yourself properly. I, and before he went, he couldn't uh, breathe right. He had allergies. Uh, his he um, had uh, he couldn't breathe at night. Um, like sleep apnea. Yes, right. thank you. And and he was not healthy, you know, low energy, overweight. He came out of that. I, as a matter of fact, I pushed him for an extra week to stay mm-hmm. down there. Four weeks, he came back. No more allergies. He was sleeping at night. He could breathe at night. I mean, it, it, it was amazing. Lost weight, feeling better about himself, feeling more youthful and energized. And it's just amazing. It is in diet. We have medical students that rotate through our office. Uh-huh. And they spend about two to four weeks with us. Mm-hmm. Some come from far away. Some come from local colleges and uh, medical schools. And uh, they're shocked. They're, and they tell me after, you know, about a week, they said, wow, I never realized how many diseases are caused by nutritional factors. Yes. And I said, well, if you think about it, what you eat becomes you. Yes. So if you're putting, you know, unhealthy ingredients in your body, mm-hmm. your body's going to be unhealthy. So uh, tell us again, what are some of the healthy fats so that okay. they, they so recognize So one of my favorites, us. my all-time favorite, number one fat is coconut oil. Oh, uh, you know? yeah. Coconut oil is a medium chain triglyceride, which is the healthy kind. You might mm-hmm. see people writing that um, in the charts. It prevents inflammation. It helps uh, prevent inflammation, helps with uh, losing belly fat, increases mm. your insulin sensitivity. And did you know that if you have gallbladder disease, coconut oil, medium chain triglycerides do not activate your gallbladder. So they can have coconut oil and it won't cause a gallbladder crisis. Wow. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that is very cool. So that pancreatic cool. and gallbladder disease people can have that. 
Okay. So um, th- that's my all-time favorite. Of course, avocados. Yes. Yeah. And even butter, if it's you know made from Pure. grass-fed um, cows. And yes, I like that stuff. Irish butter. Yes. <laughs> so fats mm-hmm. are not bad for you. Saturated uh-huh. fats are not bad for you. Yes. And, um, and they're I part also, of a healthy diet. I, I also heard with the carbohydrates, you have to be really careful. Uh, what do you do? Times it by four, and then you see the amount of sugar that you're really putting yeah. into your body. Because carbohydrates change into sugars. There's no so, such thing. There's sugar, 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 sugar. Yeah. And the other bad part about grains is that they're processed, right? So they're not regular grains like you would get out of the farm. Uh-huh. And all this processed grains they can cause inflammation. I mean, my mm-hmm. dog, believe it or not, had this, I have a bulldog and she had all these allergies. We took her off the grain, even dogs, and all her allergies went away. Wow. Well, I can't thank you enough, Dr. Silva, for being our guest here this evening. It's been wonderful to have you. Thank you. Um, if you have any questions for Dr. Silva, we will take questions at 888-565-1470 uh, and we'll feed them back to you. And... Um, If you want to get a hold of Dr. Silva, please give us your telephone number again. 954-943-9670. Absolutely wonderful. Thank you again. Thank you. And um, thank you for joining us this evening. It was a pleasure to have you. I'm Lorena Anderson, your Life and Energy Coach. Uh, Please join us again next Tuesday between 6 and 7 on 1470 AM. Uh, Also, Amp2TV and allcountyhealthcare.com for our next segment and the guests that are going to join us um, then. So thank you again. Have a great evening. Thank you for letting us share with you a longer and healthier lifestyle. If you have a doctor or are a doctor and wish to be on the show, call Amp2TV at 866-244-5422 and we will put you on the air as soon as possible. Tune in next week for more information on living longer and having a healthier life. The opinions expressed on the preceding sponsored program were strictly those of its hosts, guests, and co-